G'day friends and welcome to another one of my videos. Now today we're going to be talking again about the Roland VR1 HD streaming mixer. Now that is a mouthful to say, but we're going to be concentrating a lot on the green screen behind me or how to use the chroma key, which is a new feature in the latest firmware from uh, Roland. Now I've been getting a lot of questions since I did the review on this particular device on how it works. It does have a few tricks and it's not perfect, but it can do the job when you need it. So stick around. And welcome back. Now, we're going to be talking about this feature because I've been asked to sort of talk about it because it is tricky. It is good, but it's not the best. Now, I've been working with the lighting to make sure it is good enough to do this demonstration. But while I had more light coming in from the window, I noticed that, you know, it was giving me a bit of trouble. But hopefully now that the light is more controlled, we should have a better result. So you can turn on this particular feature using the button or the key button, or you can turn it on through the menu. Now what I've done is I've connected the monitor output into my recording PC so I can actually capture what's going on in the menu. Now there is some really good software that comes with this particular device. I do recommend that you use it. It's controlled through the USB port, but I am going to do it the old fashioned way because it's probably the easiest way to make this video. So first of all, let's go into the menu. And as you can see, you've got your two pages of options. The one that we're playing around with today is the key. Now, uh, there's the on and off button. Like I said, you can do a software or hardware uh, button to turn it off. Then uh, you have your source channel. So you've got HDMI 2, uh, HDMI 3, or two image slots which uh, you can load uh, still images through the USB plug in the back of the uh, device, right? So you can, if you put them on a USB key, you can load these images on there. And by the way, these images can only be TIFF. I know, I know, but TIFF is what it requires for it to work. It took me a while to figure that one out. So HDMI is a source. So what it's asking you here is where is the green? or where is the blue? And I'll tell you a little bit about this color in a second. So this is where the green screen is practically being shown. And this is, for me, it's HDMI 1. Then um, we have uh, the color selection. Now, originally they had a black and a white, which was used for Luma Key, and that was primarily to do overlays. Uh, so you can have like uh, headings and titles and things like that. But they've then developed uh, the chroma key colors. So we've got green one, two, and three. I haven't played with two and three, but I'm guessing they're different shades of green. And then you've got blue one, two, and three as well. So I'm using green one. And um, at the back, um, we've got it illuminated. So we've got some lights so we can get like a good result. And then we've got the key uh, level and the key gain. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. So I'm going to turn off the menu. Uh, the key is on, so the button is illuminated. And I'm going to turn this on now. A lot, it, it's not intuitive, but the way you do it is that you switch over to input 2, which is my computer background, and only then will it do the overlay. And there you have it, right? So as you can see, now you've got my desktop in the green space that's on behind me. Obviously, if you had a better setup, you can bring that green screen right behind you and it could use all of your you know, all of the space behind you if you really wanted to do it that way. So how do you modify this? Well, because it's gonna depend it's gonna require a little bit of tweaking depending on your lighting conditions. So in the key area, you can play with the level, right? So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna give you an example. 
So this is looking uh, for the level, the green level, and it's trying to match it as closely as possible. As you can see, as I play with the numbers, uh, it's, it's, it's selecting the green that it expects. And then I will do it until I get rid of it. Notice I'm getting some kind of pixelation here. That's usually because of the bouncing back. Like so obviously the green is bouncing back onto that white wall. So it's picking it up. So it's actually trying to do that. Um, so I will stick to I will stick to 55. Then the key gain is really, really uh, more to see if you can uh, fade away um, the source. Uh, and so it's once again, it's a level of adjustment. As you can see here on the light box, you've got some, uh, you know, some, uh, some uh, pixelation as well. That's caused by that. So I can play around with it. So I'm going to leave it at five. I think it's doing, it's not, I'm not 100%. The white there is sort of also being affected. So I'm going to go to six. Um, seven tends to, I think seven is going to do the job just fine. So that's how you um, modify it. So you can actually change the gain. Now, it's not, like I was telling you before, it's not perfect. Notice my fingers and my head. And I'm always like just, it's just before I turn into the Hulk sort of thing. Um, but I think it's, if, if the green screen is positioned a little bit better and the lighting condition is a little bit more pro, then I think you're going to have a better result. Now, the other question I received is, well, now that you've got this sort of, um, sort of worked out, um, how do you get it so that you are not taking up all of the screen? Because what you want is to be in the corner somewhere down here uh, so you, everyone can see what's happening on the screen, just like you see in every other uh, gaming podcast or whatever, right? Now, they've put that feature in onto the second page, but it is frustrating, and let me tell you why. So right here, you can play around with the zoom, so I can make myself uh, larger or smaller. So let me scroll down to 50%. Now, obviously, what you want to do is you want to do this... Um, you want to do this in, um, in your keyboard and mouse on your computer because it'll make the job faster and easier. But here I am scrolling along. So I'm going to go down to 50%. Um, now, one of the things that one person have asked me uh, is how do, then, how do I move now this screen out of the way? And this is where it's kind of frustrating, right? So for those of you uh, who have already got one of these or have played with this, uh, you know that this particular device comes with some scenes, which is things like picture-in-picture, uh, -picture, for example, right? Um, now, it's all, I'm going to turn the key off so you can see the example better. But... It does have this feature, right? But unfortunately, I don't know why I can't get the chroma key working here in this view, right? So what I what I have alluded to is that when you press the key button, um, it practically overtakes the you know the you know what you're seeing on the screen. So it acts like another scene. And um, obviously, the way to get you on the corner is to move you, move the actual window. Now, where I first ran into trouble is I was playing with these um, source scaling, right, and manual, vertical, and horizontals, and, and the position, which is what we're talking about here. Now, I was scrolling along, trying to move the box, but it wasn't moving anywhere. Now... It's because, and I don't know why they did this, on other windows, such as the picture-in-picture, picture, and let me show you using this example, scene, picture-in-picture. Picture. If I want to modify the picture-in-picture, picture, I'm playing around with percentages, so it's really easy for me to move this because it's just 1%, 2%. Before you know it, uh, I've moved this particular uh, box out of the way. But... I don't know why Roland did this. When we're trying to modify the key positioning, instead of using percentages, I believe that they've used pixels. And so the <laughs> movement is very, very slow. I, I, it takes me forever to actually um, move me 
out of the way, right? And so it's, it becomes really, really annoying because I think I have to get up to over a, th- over a thousand to actually um, get myself out of the way enough uh, to, to, you know, to, for this to work properly. So it's got a, a couple of, let's say, um, tweaks that I need to um, do in order to get it looking the way I want it to look. Uh, but all in all, right, it sort of does what it's meant to do, but it's not intuitive. I, I have a feeling that if you use uh, your keyboard and mouse using the software provided, you will be able to move this a lot easier and you'll be able to see the effects. But why they went from percentage to pixel, I don't know. It just sort of convolutes the menu. Um, but that's how you do it. Now, you know, it wasn't available before, but as you can see, I've got my little window there, uh, and uh, I, I can practically now be uh, in my own game, killing bad guys and trying my best to, um, you know, to sort of um, to, to sort of talk about the game. Oh, what am I talking about? I'm never going to be an online gamer, so <laughs> I should give up. Anyway. Uh, that's all I wanted to say to you today, guys. So thank you very much for um, for uh, sticking around for that convoluted explanation of how this works. Hopefully, if uh, you're looking around for this device or if you already have a role and you haven't updated the firmware, that's one of the things that you can expect. So it was fun to work it out. Like I said, wasn't intuitive, but eventually it did what it was meant to do. So that was it. So if you liked the video, give me a like. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I'm going to get close to a 1,000. Can you believe that? I thought it would never happen, but we're getting up there. Uh, So until the next time, ciao for now.